home. Yeah, That's it's very nice. Uh, everybody's good. Colleen's good. My son is good. Yeah. Yeah. You forgot well, his tight. name, didn't you? Mm-hmm. I'll get it. I'll he's get there. Sport. He's doing good. Ronan. Ronan. <laughs> Ronan. Ronan Dex. <laughs> All right. Super sick. Everyone, get your. Make sure your mic is as close as it can feasibly be on a round table to your mouth. I am a robot. Red is my favorite color. Good. That's why I got that. Green's my favorite color. Is it really? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I hate yellow. (laughs) I do too. I think not there's anybody who likes yellow. But it's more about us. You know what I mean? (laughs) Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Frame Rate, the show where we rate frames. I got Abe Epperson and, and me, Michael Swaim, sitting here talking into microphones topped with very brightly colored windscreens. Yeah, mine's green. Mine's yellow. Boo. I like green. Okay, good. And who's with us today? Introduce me so I can say what color mine is. Sorn Bowie's here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And mine is red. <laughs> and are you pleased with that I'm selection? I'm so pleased. Red is my favorite color. Makes this you feel like a, a race car. <laughs> it's a real good night for me. I feel like the level of discourse we've already laid out is in perfect keeping with the tone of the film we're going to be covering. I like red. It's a race car. That's right. We're talking about The Monster Squad from TriStar Pictures, 1987, written by, and I feel bad saying this, Shane Black and Fred Decker, directed by Fred Decker. Why do you feel bad saying that? Yeah. Okay. Explain first. (laughs) Yes. No, I guess the very first thing I should do is the nutshell pitch, because I do suspect there will be people who haven't seen yes. this. It's but why a, do it that way when you can sing it? Because there's actually a Monster Squad song. Is at it the, the very end. song? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I didn't memorize it and sing it, did uh, you? No. Can you, please? No, I wish. Damn, I was oh. super hoping for it. I really hoped you were tipping that you can sing first, the whole First there was monster. Dracula, then the Wolfman, then came along uh, a... Uh, sea monster in a pond. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Is it something like He's that? Like they go in the chronological it. order of how they I appear in the film. I think they call him like creature of the black lagoon, and the they do. Yeah. Yeah, but I always saw him as swamp thing. But I guess the but the same. swamp thing does, looks different. That he is everybody looks enough. different. He's yeah. notably no, but he really does look reminiscent of the specifically the creature from the black lagoon from that movie. Gotcha. Which is also a Universal monster movie. So in a nutshell. This is the sh- dark universe that they just tried to launch with the Russell Crowe Mummy movie. <laughs> but this was the first time they tried. And I, I will say it's better than the Mummy movie. I don't um, know if they tried. They made a one-off movie about the Goonies versus monsters. Versus all the classic Universal movie monsters. You got your Draculas. You got your Frankensteinies. Uh, your Creature from the Black Lagoon. And what else? Mummy. Mummy. And Wolfman. Wolfman. And then there are also some minions of Dracula, some women yeah. who he kidnaps and turns the into wives. vampires. Yeah. yeah. Thralls. So, obviously, I thought it was stupid, but I don't want to go into that at first. <laughs> I want Soren to explain why you're excited to see this movie on the list, why sure. you picked it, and what you love about it. I'm so it. excited about this because it's been, as long as I've known him, he's wanted to have just a microphone for him to talk about Monster Squad. And I, that's, we're ready. Just so like, get, this is the vessel. Get people to want to watch it and explain why. <laughs> this is a movie that I really appreciated in my childhood. Went back and watched and appreciated it all over again. <laughs> I was like, yep, holds up. There are a few things that we'll talk about that obviously don't hold up in it uh, <laughs> that are... I mean, just because it's 2018 now and we're all a little bit more woke, there's things in there that clearly don't hold up. There's a lot of the F word, F bombs, like F A G G O T yep. being thrown around. <laughs> um, and uh, there's also a scene in which the the kids um, threaten a, a young woman into doing what they wanted to do with the threat of revenge porn. <laughs> Yeah, they blackmail her with photos Pictures that she herself. did not. Yeah, uh, this woman who's apparently spends a good deal of her time just changing in front of her open window. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit too much, to be honest <laughs> yeah. with you. Um, but it's a, it, ultimately, it's a movie. Okay, so the premise is that there's a bunch of young kids. They, uh, they become tasked with stopping this um, monster conglomerate, this ragtag team of the best monsters there are. They task themselves. <laughs> That's another point is no one makes them do that. No. Like, but they you know this, monster stuff. But he gives the speech where he's like, and we can't go to the adults. No one can stop them but us. Right. I'm like, why no, so? Adults could, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so these kids, they, they figure out that the, 
there's a MacGuffin in this. There's an amulet that Dracula's after. Dracula has put together a team. And it, it's the best team the of monsters team. there are. I, the only reason I said ragtag is because mummy was in my, my mind. <laughs> but uh, he puts together this team. They're going to get this amulet, destroy it. And this amulet basically balances out good and evil. And there's only one portion of the year, every hundred years, where this amulet is uh, is vulnerable. And they can smash it. And then evil takes over. At midnight. Yeah. So these kids have to stop that from happening. Van Helsing tried to do it. And fucked it up. Van Helsing, he had a team Mm -hmm. a hundred years ago and they didn't get it right. And now it's up to these kids. Yeah, this starts, this movie starts with an opening crawl that says 100 years ago, Van Helsing and a ragtag band of rebel fighters tried to wipe out all the monsters in Transylvania. They blew it. (laughs) (laughs) It's a really good crawl. The font is really cool. It's like this old Stranger Things type of font. The font's creepy because it's spooky. Yeah, no sound over that crawl. That crawl is over complete silence. It's the Shane Black touch. (laughs) Uh, And this... Oh, sorry. And so this movie is... Soren's boner just hit the underside of the table, (laughs) FYI. It hurt. (laughs) It was uh, a really seminal movie for me when I was young. Uh, this was like what I had instead of Goonies. I, th- I think that there are some kids who probably got this uh, and some kids who ended up with Goonies. And like, I don't know what it was that resonated specifically with me. I can get into like some things why I think it did. But uh, this movie's, there's just something about like the way that these kids talk to each other that as a kid felt very real to me. And looking back on it, I mean, I guess I could ask the question, did all of these movies influence the way me and my friends talked and that's why they feel so authentic? Mm. Or was this actually, they, these, uh, there was a time in the 80s where they were just like, no, we fucking nailed it. We know how kids talk to each other and this is <laughs> right, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's true. It feels genuine, except I did think the kids were overly cruel. Like, yeah. I didn't... I felt weird, like I wouldn't drop the F word at my friends. I did used to say stuff is gay in the way that kids do and hopefully don't as much in these days. But uh, I don't remember. I feel like these kids are one shade edgier, like Sonic the Hedgehogified. Yeah, okay. Because what's his name? Uh, Sean? Yeah, Sean's the main kid. The scene where it cuts to them... And they're walking down the street, and one's wearing a shirt that just says Stephen King Rules. Yeah. And the other one's holding a skateboard as as big as their body. (laughs) Yeah, the old Voltaire skateboards. I'm just like, 90s overload. And it's crazy because it's 87, but this movie reads it like it's 90s ing so hard. The kid has a a collar that goes almost, like a a loose collar that goes almost all the way down to his belly button when he's got his sunglasses on it. Like, it's, and they wear gotcha clothing. Do you remember gotcha with the fish on it? Yeah. Oh my God. And we haven't even mentioned. The rude kid, Rudy, <laughs> who unironically is dressed in a leather motorcycle gloves, but so rides cool. a bicycle, <laughs> smokes cigarettes. Well, he's only in junior high. And has a leather jacket with the collar popped and yes. dark sunglasses and at all And he does times. metal shop. Yeah. <laughs> he's awesome. He's allowed to make bullets in metal shop. Yeah. Cool, which is, me- cool metal shop. They're, they're, that's one thing that we can get into. The adults are just not, a, they're, they are not in the picture in this movie. Yeah, they're just sl- taking the week off. I don't even, it's okay. It's believable to me because they show that the moms find silverware missing. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's where he got the silver. He took it into metal shop. The teacher's not paying attention and he made bullets. But the question is, where did he get the bullet gun. molds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did and the gunpowder get... for those bullets. Uh, that's and how did he make a cartridge to go with the bullet? Yeah. All right. My well, question is, where are they all getting this dynamite? Like, everyone has dynamite. The <laughs> dynamite, cops have dynamite is the most used weapon in the movie. <laughs> Dracula <laughs> has, a has lot dynamite. dynamite. Who has magic powers... His signature attack is to throw a stick of dynamite. There's at just people. a dynamite okay. store on the main block. He's like, glad dynamite's in, making money this what, week. What do you want here, Michael? Do you want me to try and do you want me to give you a a, a sell of this movie and why it's a good movie? Definitely, at okay. some point, because I also I'm more fascinated by the fact that you say it holds up because I understand nostalgia factor. Okay, um, but like, for example, my dad missed my birth because he was seeing Goonies. <laughs> Cause he thought the labor would go a little longer and he's, it was yeah. opening day and he's like, I've heard it's really good I gotta go see <laughs> and he missed it. it. So he's watching Goonies. So Goonies definitely has like a special place in my heart. But when you watch it, I think it holds up because the filmmaking is there and is quality. Mm-hmm. Whereas this 
feels very much like the GoBots or the Mellow Yellow. This is yeah. If between this and Goonies, can you not tell that this is the off-brand one and Goonies is the Coke? Of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, Goonies came out what maybe two or three years before this movie does. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-five. Okay, and this one is, is 88? 87. 87. So I wonder if this one was even in production when before Goonies came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess I could look that up. But, no, but, I mean. uh, I, it, it does feel like they're trying to cash in a little bit with this movie. But uh, I still don't hold that against this movie because I think that it's actually doing something a little bit different than Goonies did. I don't think that the main antagonist in this movie... Are is Dracula or the Wolfman or the Mummy? The the main antagonist in this movie is divorce, <laughs> and this story. Wait, that is, are, are, is his parents getting divorced? Yeah, yeah. Even, they're going to counseling. Yes. And so oh, the, they're going to marriage. You knew you signed up yeah. for. He's Let like me, angry at her because he's like, I'm a cop. I'm right. going to do cop okay, shit. Yeah. So th- we learned at the very beginning of this movie when Sean is in the principal's office that he's. He's there because he's been drawing shit in class. He's creating storylines around these monsters. Yeah. And he's created this spider with a human head. And, and his buddy's like, he makes these stories about them. We, we have a whole club. So, Sean, this is like the tangible way that Sean deals with his fears is these monsters. And the, the idea of the classic movie monster is so uh, alluring to him because it's a very easy way to be a, a way to like ground your fears and put them in something encapsulated in something that you understand. And if you watch and watching it again, this all made even more sense to me. The way that he, uh, his, his parents divorce or like his parents pending divorce is something yeah. that's happening in like the very, very background of this movie. That's right. You guys had to remind me because I think it, it's referenced like three times. Yes. Period. Yeah. But I'll take you through it and <laughs> yeah. prove to you that, that it was intentional. That, yeah. That that that, was in the fact, thing. the story that we're getting of him solving all these, this, him beating up these monsters is basically just this story that he's writing out. Okay. That Sean is writing. And that's why it feels so campy. That's why it feels like a kid wrote it. That's mm-hmm. why there's dynamite in it. And why every once in a while, uh, Dracula can use either laser beams from his eyes or he can use dynamite to blow something up. My biggest problem with Dracula <laughs> is that he has a staff that has an extendable <laughs> jumper cable and antenna in case he ever needs to bring Frankenstein back to life on the fly. Dracula <laughs> shows up in town and fun- somehow gets a hold of a hearse, a black hearse with no license plates on it, with a skull as his uh, hood ornament. Yeah. Like, that's By the way, it's a, a ghost that's, car. N- <laughs> that's oh, right. Yeah, it phases through other cars. <laughs> that is not an inconspicuous vehicle for yeah. him to be trying to amass this team with. That's a custom job if I've ever yeah. seen one. Um, I believe the license plate for him reads, Yo, I'm Dracula. <laughs> Dra- Drac- 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 home. Yeah. Drac- All right, but unveil your okay, theory. It so, sounds great. Yeah, so Sean starts off, he's having trouble in school. That is also a quintessential red flag of kid who's not handling his parents' divorce well. Right. Um, the first time that we meet his mom and his dad, he's his dad is getting ready to go to counseling with his mom, and they're asking Sean to stay home and watch his sister. Uh, the dad immediately gets a call and has to go into the station, and the mom is like, I'm important. He's like, yeah, but so is my job. And mm-hmm. he leaves her there, and she's sort of stunned. Sean witnesses this. Uh, there's uh, a scene later where the, his Sean's little sister is going to bed, and... Uh, she asks her mom, are you going to yell at him? And she's like, no, I love your father very much. And the little girl's like, no, no, no. I'm, I mean, mean, Sean. I Sean, thought, yeah, you were, yeah, Sean yeah. Did, was the one who was an asshole. Because her mind is occupied. Him, yeah. Punish yeah. him, yeah. So then after that, in the same night, Sean hears the, those two yelling. He's like in a closet or something. It's very strange. He's eavesdropping in the, yeah. one of those slatted closets. Yeah. yeah. It's the kitchen. Oh, it's, yeah, that's right. It's the kitchen. Because then he, the first thing that Sean does, he hears his parents like really going at it in a very real way where they're yelling say, at each other. It's surprisingly unsanitized. No, it's, yes. The yelling is very like... That's a like a serious drama movie fight between parents. Yeah, that, yeah and that juxtaposed with the silly, campy dialogue of like, ha, do you any girls who have been dorked before? <laughs> and yeah. like, or like, Wolfman's got nards. Like yeah. that, those two. Wolfman's and then, got nards. That compared to this fight that the parents are having, the fight feels very, very real. And then what Sean does, he goes and he sits down with a piece of fucking paper and mm-hmm. starts writing and he looks at a board where like he got a call from somebody. He does a little anagram and it turns out it's Dracula. No, it's not an anagram. It's a reverse. It's just the word Dracula backwards. <laughs> yeah. He got... So Sometimes the, anagrams are just the word backwards. Which I guess it's that is technically still best, an anagram. It's the best 
best phone call I wish I could have heard. <laughs> because that means Dracula at some point, because it says specifically, like, dollar signs, like, the mom was like, he's looking if at you the want, whiteboard at home. If yeah. you want to give up this diary that you can't read in German, even though his mom has already like given to him as a gift and she knows got, he loves yeah, it, which is weird. She got it as a gift for him like a couple but days ago. But it's also like slowly, like kind of lightly floating the idea that you yeah. can get a ton of money from this guy, Alucard. It's like whatever. this guy called Mr. Alucard. And I just imagine <laughs> he's like, yeah, um, this is Alucard. Uh, <laughs> Alucard. But I love it. The also, diary, much money. <laughs> it also implies that she didn't ask him like, how do you know I bought a book at a thrift store and gave right. it to my son? So many things had to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the first thing that Sean does after he hears his parents fighting is he just starts delving into monster shit. Right. He, he does this thing on the board. And then I am proposing that the whole rest of the story is him just writing this out. In the kitchen table. You're writing it out of so the kitchen like, table. Because the next scene. He's like, no, my parents aren't fighting. Dracula's here. Dracula's the problem. <laughs> yeah. And the very next scene is him in the clubhouse with everybody being like, we're no longer just a club. We're the monster squad now. Now we fight monsters. Why? And they're like, why? Because this book my mom randomly got me is coincidentally yeah. the only book that will stop Dracula and he's here now. Right, which would never, ever, ever happen. And his friends are like, uh, okay. Uh, they get on board pretty quick. Yeah, so but... he's writing this out and he's like, he's creating, he's, he's assembled his team to deal with this thing that he doesn't know quite how to deal with. Uh, so do you think the whole thing is the story in his head or do you think he literally goes up to the clubhouse and tells them now no. we're going to play monster squad? No, no, I don't think any of that happens. I think this is him writing out his version of the story. Okay. Cause my, cause then the big glaring hole is the old creepy German guy. Cause he physically joins them and yes. does a bunch of stuff and interacts with Dracula. No, they never, this is just another L, a character in his story that is he the borrows guy from, from the reality. Neighborhood, right. Yeah. This creepy guy in the neighborhood I mean, who the, no one's ever talked to. The ending shows him literally give the monster squad card to like a general of the army yeah the jet the army com- well we'll get to that but like the army shows up after because a kid writes of. a letter yeah the yeah. kid writes a letter and the army shows up in such uh, in a way that's like so reminiscent of the way they would in like a looney tunes cartoon right right like it's 14 guys in a tank and they go and we're the army who are you kid and he hands him a card which we don't get an insert of which is a, because <laughs> we never established that he made cards for monster squad yeah we did he's cut really? he's cut yeah he prints them out oh, and he cuts oh them. that's true the one kid yeah the other kid i just yeah. thought it would have been neck. it's it was kind of a weird choice to not have an insert at that moment yeah but he smirks and says we're the monster squad and yeah. credits roll um i love my favorite implication of that theory is that his dad had to go to a real crime that's actually like gritty and horrible. And he's like, I bet he went to the museum because the mummy's missing. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's so painted over and whitewashed by the mind of a child. The most, uh, the best scene for this is a scene, that, and they don't address this in the movie, and I have no idea why. Well, you remember the scene where uh, Dracula comes and blows up the clubhouse? The dad confronts Dracula with out front. dynamite. Yeah, Dracula comes, or Dracula and dad have a showdown in the front of the house, and Dracula dynamites his partner. Okay, because I was I need to bring up <laughs> there is a token black character who says token black stuff. Yes, and then gets dynamited in a car, and his. Partner who's I think it's pronounced dynamite. Who seems dynamite? Who seems, who seems close to him throughout? Never mentions. Like there's no scene where he goes like, "It sucks that my partner was blown up yes, by Dracula." Right. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's he never addresses that, but he he confronts Dracula in front of the house. His partner gets blown up. He shoots Dracula, and the bullets just go right through him into the house. And then the <laughs> where wa- the wife is like yes. right there, and she comes out of the house and is like sort of in shock and and. He runs in, asks where his kids are, and when he runs in the house, her bags are packed right by the door. There are suitcases, there are like three or four suitcases sitting right by the door, and she's on her way out. Uh, she's leaving this oh, family. Oh, she was leaving him, and they don't even mention and it. And they don't mention it. There's, for no reason at all, there are these suitcases at the front door, right where she... But the family has to come together because the Dracula threat is so yes. overwhelming. Yeah. Yes. His mom was going to just leave. Wow. And, and what's funny is the way they staged that uh, sequence, actually, I noticed. He's pointing the gun directly at Dracula. Then Dracula turns into a bat and vanishes. And it cuts to her literally filling the space Dracula was in. Yes. And then it cuts back to him not having dropped the gun. <laughs> and then he slowly lowers it. So he kept the gun pointed at, at his, his wife, wife for just a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, there's also 
moments in there where like uh, the little sister uh, befriends Phoebe Frankenstein. Yeah. Which is a reference to the original Frankenstein film, of course, in yes. the book. In fact, they try and replicate some scenes even or, or from, from the book and also from previous movies where she's playing by the water With and Frankenstein flowers, approaches. Yeah. Yes. What's funny to me is they, so Dracula's supposed to be, this great threat is a genius. He raises Frankenstein. I don't know why he's Frankenstein's master, but you just accept that at face value. Yeah. Frankenstein says, master, okay. Dracula's great plan to foil kids. He just has to beat these kids. <laughs> he just has to kill kids. Is, okay, I know it's nighttime and I could go kill them now, but instead, I'm going to wait till daytime when I have to sleep. You, Frankenstein, go kill these kids. Frankenstein says, yes, master. And I'm just wondering if in the past, Frankenstein ever did anything Dracula said that gave him a reason to believe he was reliable. Because never once does Frankenstein even consider killing the kids. <laughs> no, he he immediately he befriends them. It doesn't cross his mind. <laughs> it's true. And so if in, in the uh, theory that... <laughs> That this is all just the story of Sean. Sean is also probably at least somewhat cognizant, whether he like realizes it or not, that his sister is in need of somebody who cares about her as well during all of this. <gasps> and he's giving her this, he's throwing her this bone in the story. Figure. Yeah, he yeah. gives uh, her this. I want to point out also that her little teddy bear that she has named Scraps. Mm hmm. Kind of like a Frankenstein. Oh, like a Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. And Frankenstein, when he gets sucked into the portal, takes Scraps with him. Yeah. One of the only details of this movie that I know the BTS of is that uh, Frankenstein, they couldn't do the bolts in the neck because they didn't have the rights to that version of Frankenstein. And so instead wow. what they did was they stitched his forehead to make it... With staples. Yeah, with staples. to They'd be like, well, look, he stitched together, whatever. Look, it, it, just buy it. It was pretty effective. I mean, all the creature effects are by Stan Winston, who's legendary for doing creature effects, yeah. who will ultimately do the thing and shit like that. Um, Good Wolfman. I was. And did what you know a weird face? The Wolfman's wolf. face, face is designed to look like Stan Winston's face, and if you look like at a picture of him, you're like, oh, he does kind of. Oh, look. really? That's he funny. has like a mousy face, but I don't. I think that was like fine, good nod, but it made your Wolfman look like a shrew man. Like I didn't buy it was a wolf. I thought it was like a squirrel man or a vole man. <laughs> huh. It's this weird pinched face. A vole man. The and the the boy Rudy. I'm a vole man. Sorry. Go <laughs> the ahead. boy Rudy who joins their group. Cool kid. Before he cool even, cool kid. <laughs> before he starts writing the story, the first interaction that they have with Rudy. Well, Rudy comes and saves the fat kid. Uh, who's obviously in the script for the horse. bulk of it called Fat Kid, fat which kid. is another yeah. thing that doesn't yes. ring as My well name's today. Horse. Even among his friends call him Fat Kid. First the yeah. bully calls him Fat Kid, and you're like, that's not nice. And then his friends are like, Fat Kid farted, and you're like, well, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need some better mm -hmm. friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the I mean, Chunk. I guess Chunk is insulting, too. Not so nice, too. either. And it's they make nice. him do that dance. Do Ugh. the truffle shuffle, shuffle Chunk. Yeah. Do it, you fat piece of shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Rudy... Joins the the gang just on the with with the knowledge that in that clubhouse he can see a woman changing whenever he wants. Yeah. So in the story, I don't. I think that's all beyond Sean. Sean is like, this is gonna be our soldier. Like this guy's gonna do all the the mean shit for us. And it is it is really this is a part that I really enjoy about the film is that he ends up killing. Four people from the town, Rudy does. Rudy lifts more than his fair share of weight when it comes to fighting the monsters. At the end, Rudy's yes. like, fuck it, I'll do it, and kills all the monsters. He's like, I'm in the club, aren't I? He yeah, kills, I'm in the goddamn club, ain't I? He kills, so he kills three women from the town who are kidnapped by Dracula and turned into vampires. Sure. But for all the people in this town who are just oblivious to what's going on, by the end of this, he's killed four people from town. He killed the wolf man, who was just another guy in town Immediately who starts becoming a wolf Immediately turns into man. a non-wolf man, and, and I, he's like, yeah. thank you. I I love the idea that because of all of them that one like you can in your head as a kid be like but they were creatures of the darkness i'm sparing yeah. them but to kill something and then have it revert to an empathetic normal human being who says it's okay thank you i'm glad you killed me and then dies in the street in front of you i'm like this kid's 16 this is gonna fuck his shit up and you can watch he's even younger than 16 and you can watch it mess him up like you can see as soon as he kills the women with the stakes like, Rudy is not in good shape anymore. He's on the ground on his knee when the cops show up. Oh, and, I didn't notice this. And this is the, so the, the scene is so you've that... watched this 12 to 15 <laughs> times? The, the scene is that he's just staked these women in the heart. One, he shot with an arrow, and two, he staked. And mm -hmm. he's, like, he's on his knees, and he's, like, on the verge of tears almost. And like the wolf man shock. starts coming up behind him. And the cops show up. 
and the cops are like get out of there kid and he turns around and he doesn't move like he just stays on the ground the, f- the police have sort of a battle with wolfman and then rudy gets up and very reluctantly puts a bullet in a, a silver bullet in a gun and shoots the wolfman and then that's really affected him too he's he just stands there for a long time like breathing yeah, yeah. after he's done it it doesn't fit with the rest of the movie like He's fucked up from having done all of this. Then Dracula kills 40 cops. Yeah, I would say around 40. I love that in that shot where Dracula's just walking towards the amulet, killing cops. There's still cops who, even rather than using their guns, Run are up like, at him. I know he just crushed the skulls of the 12 guys that run at him, ran at him, but I'm going to run at this motherfucker. That's, you, watch him, <laughs> you watch him palm the faces of some, of some cops and knock them down and presume, presumably break their necks. And then you see a cop car rolling up at him and you're like, yes, yeah. that car's going to run him over. The cop, the cop car stops in front of him. The guy gets out and <laughs> runs up and tries to grab him by the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, like, and they, they're no. not even using lethal force. They're just no. running up with... <laughs> Like batons just and batons shit. and shit, yeah. even though they saw him like kill eight guys. It's also the it's it's very hazy as far as Sean's dad's job here Del. because does his name Dell? The dad's yeah. name is Dell. Yeah, so Dell and his partner seem to be the only detectives in this town, but their jurisdiction is wide sweeping. They yeah. have they have a lot of places they have to cut co- a lot of ground they have to cover. There's some swamps areas. There's an old house that no one's ever even heard of before. Is it L.A. because there's that shot no. where Dracula comes to a crest overlooking the city and says it begins, and <laughs> it <laughs> looks like L.A. But I don't it's know not, that it is. Okay, yeah, they there's a weird crossovers with habitats here, but, but I, I love that just be right. Else. That's what I was gonna say is. Unless it's Louisiana or Florida, it's kind of odd that because they needed the creature from the Black Lagoon, there's literally like a Black Lagoon yes. next to a major metropolitan city. Occasionally, <laughs> the, the kids will just wander outside of town and immediately they are in the Everglades. Oh, and I love when they're like, <laughs> duh, go to 666 Shadowbrook Lane. And he's like, oh, that giant castle? You're like... There's a giant gothic yeah. castle in this city. That oh, my has, God. Yeah, that has iron gate gated doors inside of yes. it. And yeah, it's it's amazing. And uh, its address <laughs> is 666, and you're, they're still like, I don't think that has anything to do with these <laughs> monsters. <laughs> the, these are the only two detectives in this entire area, and it's a big enough town that not everyone's aware of what's going on. The scene where Dracula dynamites the, bir- the not the birdhouse, the clubhouse, and also a, a cop car, with uh, maybe a half an hour later, the kids arrive at the church, and there are extras all over the place in that scene because the car's driving up, and there are people going to a movie. Mm-hmm. There are other people driving on the street. There's a woman with shopping bags. Right, like no one is aware of what's actually happened so far, and even by the end, like this, the streets are vacant. But you've now got these people from town who the police clearly didn't know beforehand. And a police, if it's a small town, police would know everybody there. They'd know who this Wolfman guy was. But this is just another lunatic like you'd have in a city. Well, they must have logged his information because he's already spent some time in the prison and then been released. Yeah. So they have his information. Well, they, get, they, got, they shot him in the prison. Presumably at the precinct. Oh, I guess before he got fingerprinted, he got shot. Yes. Yeah. So they're, and, the, and even the first time that they met him, they weren't like... Oh, Kyle's going crazy again. Mm-hmm. They're like, who is this rando? Well, it seems like a big city. I think it is. Big. I mean, if it, it, you're just saying you can't have it both ways. Like, either it's a huge city, and why do they only have two detectives? <laughs> or if it's a small town, and then why does everyone not know each other? Right, yeah. right. Yes. Because he specific, uh, Della specifically says, I got to go downtown. So his precinct involves this small area of suburb that has swamps in it. Plus a downtown yeah. area, like the, the police station looks me- fairly metropolitan. Yeah. But they're the only cops that we seem to care about. Yes. Yes. I, and all the other cops wear their stupid mounty gear or whatever they yeah. got on. <laughs> their brown uniforms, yeah. They look like forest, serv- forest rangers. Speaking of that scene where, the climactic scene, well, I think it's also interesting that Yes, they did pay for a lot of extras, but there's no doubt in my mind that the reason the church is locked, quote unquote, at the end, like that whole end scene is shot on the Universal Studios yes. back lot. You can see the Back to the you Future You can basically clock. hear Ventura Boulevard yeah. in the background. <laughs> yeah, you can see a tram rolling by with tourists <laughs> in one shot. No, but I was, I just love realizing, slowly realizing like, Oh, they can't get into the church. I bet they eventually will get into the church and it'll be pivotable. No, they just rewrote this scene to take place on a street because that's what they have. It was way easier. Yeah. yeah. But in that climactic scene, speaking of like the math of the bodies that will be found the next day. Yeah. 
Do you believe that Horace shotgunned those two kids to death? Because I do. And here's my argument. Okay. These bullies are... And that's another difference between Goonies. I feel like somehow this movie does have more edge. Like, it's kind of weird that Dracula screams at the little girl. You Give fucking bitch. Give me the bitch. amulet, you, you fucking <laughs> bitch. You <laughs> like, Shane Black for you. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, by the same token, while he's choking her, <laughs> holding her in there and choking yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> by the same token, uh, these two bullies who we've seen be, I would say, even by bully standards, be extra cruel to this kid we like. Then he has a shotgun. He shotguns someone. Who does he kill? Swamp thing Swamp or thing. creature. He from shotguns. The back again. Yeah. And then, by the way, incidentally, the bullies have just bombard, like, locked themselves in a building and not let Fat Kid in. So, like, they were willing to watch him get eaten alive. They don't care. He must hate them so much. <laughs> they come out and say, thanks, Fat Kid. And here's the thing. If he had cocked the gun and then said, my name is Horace, I would think, oh, that's just an action shot. But he says, my name is Horace, then cocks the gun. We cut away and never see those two kids again. <laughs> he right. shot the older brother from Wonder Years. There's no reason to cock that he gun and after Derek. the threat is gone. Because how would anyone ever find out or blame him? Wouldn't you just think because it was a mistake? Or there were he, monsters everywhere. Yeah. And you can be like, they were one of them. Like, this is what Dracula got him, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's, yeah, you're right. But it, it, now that you mention it, the, the shooting of the creature from the Black Lagoon is so easy. And all he does is shoot the thing. And it's reminding me that the only person in Dracula's uh, a mass team that's any that's any help to him is the Wolfman. The Wolfman's actually very hard to kill. Everybody else is so easy to kill, even easier than a human would the be. The mummy does jack all. Oh, it's like, the best mummy death ever, though. <laughs> the mummy gets unraveled. At least they think of an idea that results in the mummy dying. It does bother me that the creature from the Black Lagoon, they're Just like, get shot. how do we beat him? Shoot him with a shot. Shoot him in the heart. I Wouldn't guess. that work for most things, I <laughs> guess? <laughs> Uh, Cause yeah, the Wolfman gets blown up and then gets re- and then he with dynamite, dynamite. Yeah, okay. and then his <laughs> limbs guessed. attach. He gets yeah, he reincarnated, which is a callback to the previous joke where they were like, "There's two ways to kill a Wolfman: silver yeah. bullets." And then they're like, "I don't know, you." No, only one way. Dynamite. Yeah, like they just they don't really have an answer, but it's like it's clear that it gets adds credence to your theory, yep. Soren, where it's just like. He wanted to think of another crazy way where it didn't work because there is only really one. one way. So what's the coolest way? I don't yes. know, dynamite out the window. And maybe one of the biggest proofs that I have that that's what the story is about is just divorce and that he's writing this is that at the very end, they create a portal in the air. Everybody gets sucked into it, including Dracula. And as Dracula's trying to, starting to get sucked into it, he jumps on Sean, tries to pull Sean in with him. And Van Helsing comes out of the hole Grabs, from 100 years in the past. Yes. And gives a thumbs up. Yes. Grabs <laughs> grabs Dracula by the neck and it starts pulling him back to the portal and gives Sean the T2 thumbs up as he disappears. You did good. Sh- uh, this man from you know the 1800s. Yeah. No idea what a thumbs up would mean. <laughs> right. That's true. But Sean is like, he knows and I know. Yeah. We're both doing the thumbs up because we got him. A, it's it's the exact portal from Army of Darkness. Did anyone else know? Yeah. Oh, it feels no, like they not. lifted yeah. the same effect. But B, it's interesting that they say the portal goes to like this monster universe that's this horrible limbo. So not only has Van Helsing apparently been surviving in there, but we also see some extras get sucked in. Yeah. Like when the portal exists, some extras. Get, I just want to see one of those shitty cops <laughs> surviving in the monster limbo universe. I would like that movie. That would be yeah, fun, like, yeah. <laughs> like Army of Dead. Uh, I do have a question for you about yeah. this divorce thing, though, yeah. because I don't think you can have it both ways. Mm-hmm. So, because you reference like uh, Horace killing two kids, <laughs> or you were referencing the fact that there's some PTSD that's going on with Rudy. Mm-hmm. So, either those two things are true, and there is some events that are happening, and it's just being unfolded by this mind, Sean, that's crazy, or Sean <laughs> sat crazy. down. And wrote the entire book. Yeah. So, like, what is the reality? Is the reality just like now it's just never ending story, or is it that some of it's true? Like, I don't know how to I rectify think, the two. Uh, yeah. It, my theory is that Sean just sat down and wrote the whole mm-hmm. thing. 
and it, by the end, like it, by the end, what happens is the parents get together. Everybody hugs each other. The two parents kiss. Yeah. And so by killing these, these monsters, he's, the yeah, this, the marriage has been saved. But you would imagine that in real, real and life, that's not even necessarily true. He just wrote a short story. Just wrote it. Like he'll wake up and his mom's parents will still Our, be fighting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it will, this won't have ended. Yeah. So, so why and did, so the Rudy stuff, like the Rudy's just like a fun thing that I noticed that he's really dealing with this. I guess that I, the way that I would, if I had to, to explain why it's that way and feels very real is that even when you're writing a story, I remember as a child writing stories and being like, I really like Stephen King. I'm going to write something where people die. And as you're writing it, you can't help but kind of get into the realism of it and feel yeah. like, mm. well, I don't really like where this Rudy's is going. Rudy's a cool guy, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, even Rudy would yeah, have some issues. be a problem. That's, I mean, that could be enough for me. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, it, it's anything. It's it, That's Monster Squad, baby. Yeah. Uh, but like, it is an interesting, like I had never heard that theory and I find it a very interesting yeah. It definitely makes the movie better, I think. See, I, yeah, right? much better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The, uh, by the way, I didn't write down any of the lyrics from the credit song, but I did write down lyrics from the one song that was clearly written for the movie that's during the weapons building montage because uh, I had, uh, you know, subtitles on. What, one chunk of lyrics is, rock until you drop, dance until your feet fall off. Someone turn the clock back. We ain't going to go nowhere. No one can stop us now. We're going all the way. It's cuckoo. It's cuckoo. It's cool. Party till your brain falls out. <laughs> <laughs> Rock until you drop. It's Word so castle. 90s. <laughs> Dance until your heart stops. <laughs> yeah. Dance until your feet fall off. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a montage, though. They're all slightly getting better mm -hmm. at making weapons. Yeah. <laughs> They're like looking at monster stuff because that's important. They're but building weapons. I also think it supports your theory, the tone, because that's what I keep getting at with the Goonies difference is the thing with Goonies is it didn't have any weird discordant moments. Yes. Whereas this has frequently moments where you're like, what is the tone of this movie? Like when the wolf man says, he has an amulet. Okay, he's gonna kill your son. It's like actually, you're like, this yeah. is so real for a kids movie. Yeah. The, as he's turning into the Wolf Man, and just that character in general, it's really hard it's to watch. Super him. tragic, that guy. Yeah, because yeah. he really wants to help the city, and 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 every single time, no one will believe him. Yeah, he calls from a phone booth, and he's turning into the Wolf Man. He's in like that mid stage mm. where he's just spitting froth from his mouth he's like he's gonna kill your son <laughs> yeah. and then he turns and you're like whoa whoa yeah, <laughs> okay what, what happened, happened to dracula now? what happened to dracula puttering around an old castle dynamiting various walls <laughs> by the way can someone explain to me exactly what happened did dracula setting dynamite to try and get to the amulet cause part of the house to coincidentally fall on Frankenstein? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, he clearing got, that Dracula up. got very lucky in that scene. Only that one part of the house collapsed and yes. it landed right yeah, on Frankenstein. Yeah, just to get the okay. Yes. There's also, I, I would say, we, it's not uh, super pertinent to my theory, but one of my favorite moments in the movie is the young kid who has the Basset Hound uh, mm -hmm. that he, when he wakes up in the middle of the night and goes and gets his dad because there's a monster in his closet. And the dad comes in, and the dad is so good. He's like, okay, hey, all you monsters, get out of here. Get out of here. You can't stay. You two on the bed, get out of here. I'll see you. And then the kid's like, he's like, you see any more? And the kid goes, yeah, in the, closet. in the closet. And the dad just opens the door, and there's a horrifying mummy in the closet, and the dad's not looking at it. And he's like, ooh, ooh, look at that monster. It's so scary. Now it's gone. <laughs> Go to bed. Yeah. yeah. One of my Here's favorite my parts, though, is that the mummy actually listens. And leaves. <laughs> like, is he immediately this leaves? This is my question. The dad then leaves. The mummy approaches the kid, Lee, and then turns and goes out the window. Why did the mummy come in this room? Yes. Why is it in the closet? Yes. What is it thinking it's doing? It was all trying to find questions. out where the kids were? diary is. Because it sent all of his <laughs> lieutenants kids to find the, diaries. That's right. The kid was in the monster squad. I love that the mummy's just like, I'll check this kid's closet. <laughs> now I'll leave. <laughs> and when they kill him, they say, see you later, Band-Aid breath. Yeah. Yeah. Very Goonies. There's, there are moments, there was a moment that got me in this movie that made me laugh in my last <laughs> viewing of it, which was the woman who they find who's supposedly the virgin who's going to help them when they're waiting for the other two kids to finish up whatever the fuck they're doing. And they're, they're, not, they're late. They're not on time. And she's just sitting there with Rudy. And she goes, maybe the monster's got him. And Rudy goes, 
Maybe the monster's cat. Yeah. <laughs> the well, way that he why? does it is filled with so much disdain. Yeah. <laughs> that, that it Especially because really uh, it's uh, Patrick's sister, right? Yeah. This is the yeah. blackmailed woman who they Which took photos it? of. He blackmails yes. his or own specific, sister. Yeah. Specifically naked photos mm. from Frankie. And yeah. he goes, takes a photo of her and goes bogus. <laughs> yeah. Well, he also says bogus when he hurls Dracula into the sun or whatever. It's kind of bogus. Funny. bogus. Um, Baby Ruth. But I love, the just to get detailed, the exact context of the scene is a young man and an older kid use semi-nude pictures of his own sister that they took to blackmail her into admitting her sexual history to them. It's not great. <laughs> In their clubhouse. Oh, yeah, it's, it's real bad. Great. It's not great at all. And then I love that the punchline is the ceremony doesn't work because she's not a virgin. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess she did some hand stuff on the bus to van camp. Because she's like, well, Steve, but that didn't count. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. And then I love that that, of course, invites the creepy old German guy to say something that is technically correct and it saves the day, but it's just weird for an old man to go, isn't this six-year-old girl a virgin? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just a weird setup. Yeah. I had a question about that because they before the scary German guy, wait, does the blackmail happen before or after meeting scary German after, guy? After, because the German guy tells them what they need to do. And he tells them that the virgin has to be a woman. And he immediately believes the book is yeah. true, which is interesting. Yeah. So, uh, so why wouldn't they just assume that they could go with Phoebe and they have to go have a montage hunting around for virgins? It's not clear. I... I think because the quintessential virgin from stories like this and all the way back to like ancient myth is it's always, is it's always a, wo- a, a of woman. Age. Yeah. 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 At least, yeah. All right. Yeah. It would have been a really dark film if they would have used Phoebe and it didn't work. Or if they had used the youngest oh, wow. member of the monster squad, the little boy, sacrifice yeah. him. Eugene. <laughs> yeah. Eugene. Uh, <laughs> some other just, I know Zap is apropos of nothing, but there's other like just super good lines. that I want to yeah, make sure are me. recorded. Uh, the most 90s line, I think, was, Sean, wait, scary monsters, us, 12 years old, remember? Fat kid, midnight, end of world, remember? (laughs) (laughs) Takes one and no one, as if. You keep mentioning that this is a 90s movie, and and I like, I'm going to hold you to this, that you think that this movie was was ahead of its time. Yeah, that it was ahead of its time. I do think it has... A 90s pastiche that is slightly ahead of its time. Mm. It doesn't feel 80s. It feels edgier mm. like the 90s was. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. I think the last few years of the previous decade can be they, shifted it, over. It, it's a little ahead of its time, way. but like, you know, like when we get like 97, we're starting to get into the lingo that right. yeah. propels us yeah. forward. Yeah, Blossom was a quintessentially 90s show, <laughs> but that started in 88 or 89. Yeah. Right, right. But I mean, you got to give it, it up yeah, to that, Shane Black for knowing the lexicon, the lingo. That's true. Has his finger speaking, on the pulse. Speaking of very Shane Black lines, you mentioned Dracula blows up their clubhouse. You didn't mention he blows it up, then turns away and says, meeting adjourned. <laughs> 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 yeah. Which I also love is... He's trying to make it so the monsters can rule Earth for eternity. And he stops to do this bitch to blow up a kid's treehouse. Yeah. It doesn't advance his plan. Oh. It's because he believes he's, that the monster squad is a real but threat. I, right, but yeah. <laughs> the treehouse doesn't have the amulet. And he's just like, by the way, fuck your little treehouse. Yeah, he's you know? mad at these kids yeah. at this point. This is fuck war. Those kids. This is they war, They came Michael. into his house and took the amulet. Yeah, it's true. He's furious. He's, um, I, there is another behind the scenes fact I'm not realizing that I know, which is that well, Liam Neeson tried out for that Dracula part and didn't get it. Oh, wow. So cool. I also read on IMDb trivia that, and I don't know who the fuck wrote this or how you confirm this or what, but it says, weirdly, critics, like, in a poll, picked this Dracula to be the most memorable film Dracula. And I'm like, mm, fuck it, I don't believe you. <laughs> how did this f- trivia fact get yeah, vetted? That sounds like it was on, somebody did a blog of the best Draculas and was like, I like this one the <clears throat> best. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More trivia, and this is just shows a different time, uh, when uh, Dracula lifts up Phoebe and calls her a bitch, right? <laughs> yeah, not a great uh, moment. She screams, and it had to be done in one take because uh, the actor who was playing Dracula had to put in red contacts and like the fangs. extensions oh, yeah. of fangs. And he was very against the idea of like s- suddenly scaring the little actress. Uh, but 
you know, the director said, don't worry about it. Do it it this time. I'll tell her to be prepared for it. Did not. Told her, you're just going to scream on this one. When do I scream? How do I know? You'll know. And so those are her legitimate screams. Oh, no. Because up to then, (laughs) when they had shot scenes together, he did it without his contacts. Yeah, he doesn't need his contacts. Right. I mean, he only really has contacts for that scene. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like when he's like, Turning into but they a like bat. kept him away from her, so she didn't know that was going to be the right. situation. They didn't yeah. have much interaction. It's like true, bro- true blood rules with mm-hmm. this Dracula. He can choose when his fangs are pointy and when his eyes and are his, scary. His bloodlust makes his eyes red. Yeah. yeah. Talking about nostalgia factor, though, what was because I saw this kind of probably around the same time that you saw it, and uh, what, why it was so scary to me, and it, like obviously it didn't work on me this time, but. Uh, I'd probably seen it maybe once in between at some point, but it was just like put it on and have a party kind of thing. So I didn't actually sit there with an analytical eye, but I re- I was trying to find it because this this movie terrified me when I first watched it. Yeah, I must have been around ten, or it could have been even younger, uh, probably even younger. But whenever my parents would allow me to see a film like this, and there was something about like the scariest part to me was when uh, like Dracula couldn't transform back from bat and he had this like ooze around yeah. and all of the shakiness of the prosthetics like it terrified oh, yeah. me that's like it, a hard move that's a hard scene to watch you're absolutely right and I think maybe you and I saw this at the wrong time too because we had older brothers uh-huh. and so like we weren't supposed to be watching a movie like this right. yet and we watched it also the shot you're talking about totally looks wrong because they had the actor do the thing where he sticks his head through a hole in the floor and right. they build a fake bat body on yes. his neck yeah. and it looks weird and yeah. creepy. And everything has got ooze and it just, and like even his fin, his uh, his like wings are transparent and you yeah. can see veins. Like it's just a next level like creature feature shit that I was not ready to do. It deal has with. sort of a Cronenberg feel to it. Yeah, it does. The, yeah, because the, the bat I guess is vulnerable. When Dracula's a bat, he can be shot by bullets, and he does get shot, and then he turns into half bat, half man, is like writhing in a bu- among a bunch of sports authority boxes. <laughs> but, I was, I was <laughs> hoping, because I guess it's obvious that if Dracula's in town and you see a bat where it shouldn't be, you shoot at it, but it is nighttime. I was hoping it was going to turn out Je- Del just killed some just bat. Killed yeah. bat. He thinks but he solved the problem. From but the seriously, swamp. did you guys see that? I just shot a bat out of midair. Right out of the air, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. Your car exploded. <laughs> uh, last line I want to drop is yes. just, and I'm going to read it with my emotional reaction to this line built oh, into God. my reading of the line. Oh, God. This line is word for word near the end of the movie. Don't go away, Frankenstein. Please don't go. Please, please don't go, Frankenstein. I just can't believe someone wrote that <laughs> and someone performed it. It's like sh- the end of Shane, but with Frankenstein. <laughs> it could have been edited that way. Come I, back, it's also Frankenstein. That, yeah, could have just girl. been, come back, Frankenstein, come back, and then edited to be longer. Yeah. And they were also, there. Pro- that girl was in the middle of a, a wind turbine and they're like, mm-hmm. just say some lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just riff on it. Uh, but you're right. It is. It, that's what made me also, that was the part where I watched and I was like, oh shit, this was the, this was, that was the only stable figure in this young girl's life. Yeah. That she wants to be a part of the monster club. They want nothing to do with her. They kick her out constantly. She's constantly trying to get their attention and they're always like, fuck off Phoebe. <laughs> and yeah. then she, her parents are getting divorced. Like Phoebe, things are not going well for Phoebe. We and we barely address it. She doesn't know with any friends. kids her own age. Yeah. She has no friends yet. And then here, finally she has this structure and order in her life, which is this big docile figure who, who's nothing but raw power. But that's, yeah. What's funny is though, that's what's funny about that line is it's one of those lines that takes you out and makes you remember the premise. And you're like, <laughs> Yeah, a reanimated corpse is her father figure. <laughs> She's begging for him to not get sucked into a portal. <laughs> and she loses that one too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But that's just in, maybe if that's just in his story, she just has to deal with losing her real parents, not an additional surrogate. Yeah, I really like this theory that Soren has. It, it makes the, the movie a, a little more interesting. Yeah, it was the first time I noticed it was when I saw the suitcases. Oh, uh, watching yeah, it like a few that. years ago, I it, I happened to see it on streaming, and I was like, oh, that's watch a very this again. key oh. notice. Yeah, you must have felt like you found the key that unlocks the movie. Yeah, yeah. so that you that we were working at the site that shall not be named <laughs> at the time, and uh, I was like, oh man, I want to write a whole thing about Monster Squad. And I, and I was like, no one in the world has seen Monster Squad. Yeah. This is not a part of pop culture. 
And uh, so I was just sort of waiting I for, totally, <laughs> for the opportunity. Like, Somebody I, give me it. I totally thought it was Little Monsters. I was all ready to watch Little Monsters. Yes. Which, also yeah, a great yeah. movie. And then I was like, oh, no, it's this totally different thing. I have no, I don't think I've ever heard it referenced. Like, I complete blank spot, Monster Squad. Never heard Kick Him in the Nards? No, never Kick, heard Wolfman's, Wolfman's Got, got nards. nards. I love that that's the first act as a leader. I mean, technically, he's been the leader the whole time, but it's the first time that they're all like, I don't know, you're the leader. Yeah. And then Wolfman jumps in, Kick Him in the Nards. <laughs> also, it's just like a good first leader. <laughs> I love that Wolfman doesn't know how to react because he has to he goes it's like a good 20 se- like kick him in the nards kick him in the nards yeah. wolfman don't have nards <laughs> wolfman cover your nards at this point <laughs> he's just <laughs> standing there he's hovering just yeah. In yeah, the he's hallway. just juking yeah. looking one way or other just checking yeah. if there's any feet coming at him um, uh, the- Dracula's here dweeb we'd be beast bait <laughs> beast bait that's right yeah. uh, but the kid throws that line away I feel like it works <laughs> Beast yeah, bait works for you. Um, the Shane Black is strong. You can feel it all throughout. Oh yeah. There's one thing that really creeped me out in the watching of this because it is a horror movie for kids. It has an element of like your, you know, your fear is not as peaked as it would be with something like Hereditary, but you're still like you feel the on-edgeness of people dying in front of you. And uh, I'm watching it, and just before watching it last night, I had listened to your podcast uh, with Dan, mm. uh, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. And in within the first 10 minutes of the movie, the kid is like, I can't watch my sister tonight. I'm going to see Groundhog Day. And I pause uh, and yep. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. This movie came out long before Groundhog Day. Yeah. It can't. And so Groundhog, this is Groundhog Day 11 in the movie. And it's supposed to be Friday It's a horror 13th. movie. Yeah. It's yeah. a horror movie called Groundhog Day. That's what I was confused. Cause then he says, what's the big deal? I just want to see this stupid horror movie. And yeah. I was like, this kid considers Groundhog Day a horror movie. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a, he says, yeah, he says specifically a guy with an ax who got blown up, mm-hmm. uh, in the last, for, in the last iteration of it. And I was like, wait, that could be, that could easily be somewhere in the 10,000 or 37 or 40 years of what Groundhog Day is. That you have like that horror film take place. A movie place. that released six years after this one released. In one iteration, <laughs> Bill Murray decided to see if he butchered everyone in town with an axe, what would, would that break the cycle? Yeah. Yes. It just starts a murdering wow. spree. Wow. I want to s- Now I want to see. Leaves only Andy McDowell alive, comes to her at midnight covered in blood and is like, I did it for you. <laughs> yeah, he's just a vengeful guy. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> 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 so good. This is a good Who are we gonna have a snowball fight with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's got the heads of the kids. The kids yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be real cold. <laughs> out there. You got me, babe. <laughs> uh, I'm out on Monster Squad. You, yeah, I think Soren definitely deserves the last word. Yeah. If that any needs well to be put had. Together argument. Uh, no, no, I mean, I'm, I think Band-Aid Breath and Beast Bait all speak for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> we'll suck yeah. on this, you sons of bitches, <laughs> as someone once said to the creature from the oh, Black wait. Lagoon. Yeah, well, <laughs> as a little it. girl who, in this movie, was probably five or six when they made this, mm-hmm. and says the line, what are you, chicken shit? <laughs> yeah, come on, guys, don't be chicken shit. <laughs> oh, great, great. Great, just great. Uh, All right. Soren, where can people enjoy your hilarious tweets? Because you are a great, one of the best tweeters out there. That's nice of you to say. It's true. Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. You can follow me at Soren underscore LTD. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much the only social media platform that I'm on. At the moment. Good yeah. On. yeah. That synergizes well with where you can follow me on Twitter at Swaim underscore Corp, C-O-R-P. I'm not one of your corporations. <laughs> or, I'm just Abe the Mighty. Mighty boss tones. Don't forget to add that Don't, at the end. It has no boss tones in yeah. it. Put it. But put it in there, because yeah. let's just see what happens. You, Shake guys things are up. The, you guys are the worst. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at Small Beans Comedy and on Patreon at patreon.com slash smallbeans. Now go watch Monster Squad. We didn't rate a single frame. Five. I give it a five. <laughs> Which frame are you rating? Oh, the third one. Wow. <laughs> so, like, the very top of the text the, crawl. Of the crawl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a solid five. <laughs> it's a solid five. All right. I give the 4,312 frame a perfect 10. Nice. I like that one, too. <laughs>